G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and a lot of people have been asking me for my thoughts on these Slaneshi releases in uh, Decay and Decadence. Um, it's a tough one because I don't dislike them. I've definitely got some iffiness about some of it. Overall, I like it. That's not a problem at all. But it's such a thin release on the ground compared to what I want to see done with Slaneshi that it's it's... It's hard to get too uh, over-enthusiastic for it. So obviously, first up, we have uh, Sigvol the Magnificent. And he's been now updated to... This. Is that a toppled demonette head that he's standing on? It seems strange. I think he'd be standing on top of something that represented a completely different race. Anyway. Um, yeah, the model is... Good. I think that the horns on the head don't do much for me. Uh, maybe a good Demon Prince Fulgrim basis. Um, it looks big. He looks like that might be a 50 or 60 mil base that he's on. So you're probably looking at someone who's Primark sized here. Uh, the sword is very similar to, actually, of all people, Sanguinius from Forge World. Uh, to his rapier, it's quite similar to that, uh, except he does have the uh, cross guard on there as well, not just the basket hilt. He has a m massive nose, which does nothing for me, but yeah, I think overall, pretty nice model. Yep, nothing, again, that's the nitpicking, the nitpicking is the horns and the nose. Um, nothing wrong with the model, looks nice. Uh, then we get to these boys here, these are definitely for me the pick. I like these quite a lot. These are apparently the Myrmidish Pain Bringers. So, yeah, okay. Another copyright mumbo jumbo name, but whatever. Um, I like this style of sort of Saber, Falcata. I can't really call it like a Killage, because it's not necessarily a weighted tip. But yeah, these, these sort of swords look cool. I like these miniatures. These definitely sort of stand out as a Slanesh Chosen style. The kneecap on this guy kind of reminds me of a Noise Marine kneecap, which I'll get into later. Uh, overall, yeah, I, I quite like these. I do. Uh, would I change anything on them? Probably not. No, nah, nothing in particular. They do look a bit Stormcast Eternally, just with the, the gold armor and such. I think they'll probably benefit more from a purple or pink paint job but you know paint jobs are subjective that's up to the individual artist on the day and what they decide to do with them i do really like the corinthian style helms in fact i would say that the newly released uh is it lumineth wards are uh, the high elf wannabes in age of sigma they just released their helmets would look really nice on these guys um even the cowhead helmets that some of them have uh, in, in fact, I should I should probably pull that up. Give me a tick. I'll just uh, mid recording just go off and do my own thing here. But yeah, these these helmets, uh, the Alarith Stoneguard helmets, I think are very evocative of a Keeper of Secrets. So these helms would probably work quite nicely, actually. Uh, and they wouldn't be as crazy and over the top as they are on these guys because obviously the much larger bodies on these guys would uh, work better proportionally than the very tiny elven bodies of these boys uh, and ladies. And then of course these style of helmets here with the large plumes, uh, the little jewel and they're not obviously elvish helms. Uh, you could even say that some of them look sort of suitably slanishy with the runes and such, I think these helmets would look probably better than the supplied helmets on these guys. So, that's just a thought, a general thought. Plus, you know, you've got some sort of feminine heads in there, so it could really add to the, you know, ambiguity of Slanesh and Slaneshi forces, which, yeah, I'm all for. I do quite like the look of these guys. Not sure how I feel about the shields. Uh, not in a bad way. I think I'd just prefer more of them to look more like Sigval the Magnificent Shield, perhaps. But neither here nor there. Then we get to these guys. These are the Simberish Twin Souls. Uh, what a dumb name. 
uh, but at least it tells you what they are. They're possessed. I don't know why people think this is a revelation. These are possessed. These are when a mortal's body is possessed by a demon and they share it together. So it's just like Gal Vorbach or Possessed of Old in 40k and fantasy. I think the heads are very derpy on them. I think in, in some respects these have gone downhill from the sculpts of the past. I, I pulled up this image here of the old 6th uh, edition fantasy upgrade sprue. In fact, this came out prior to that. This actually came out with 5th uh, edition fantasy's Ravening Hordes Chaos uh, Warriors have, were the first kit to have this sprue included with them. Um, I remember these quite prominently on the Hunchback Chaos Warriors of the time. These heads, generally, obviously there's one very plaguey looking head in the middle of the sprue, but the rest of the sprue I think would work really, really well here on these new models. Uh, the horned head, the blind head with the mouth sewn shut, that's very Hellraiser, obviously the guy with the big tongue hanging out, very Slaneshi, uh, the single horn on the head guy is fine, and of course the, the twin head, uh, I'm going to call it Thing Head, I think that works pretty well too because it could represent the nature of the demon and the human sharing the body together. I suppose these are the Slaneshi uh, equivalent of, say, uh, Putrid Blight Kings, um, yeah, they're, they're fine. I think the heads really let them down. The bodies are good. The bodies are quite good. Um, nothing weird going on there. I mean, this guy's got Freddy Krueger hands. Um, this one here, just the weird proportions of a big masculine head with the tiny little demonette eyes is weird. And I don't think it's good weird. I think it just looks misproportioned. Um... Yeah, I, I, I think nice kits, uh, especially though, again, those Lumineth Realmward uh, helmets on these guys would look really hot. In fact, I'm pretty tempted to buy some of these, paint them in a bright pink purple scheme, maybe some leopard print here and there, and have a bit of fun with it. If you'd like me to do that and uh, document my progress as I go, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to do that if enough people want to see me do my take on a Slaneshi warband for Age of Sigma. So, moving on from there, obviously, um, I wanted to quickly look at the, the Slaneshi range as it stands. Now, this is the Demons of Slanesh, and it really, it's pretty thin on the ground. This is a problem that dates back to when Chaos uh, 3.5 ceased to exist, uh, as well as Chaos 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy slash 7th edition Warhammer Fantasy. When those books ceased to exist and the demons formally split from Chaos Warriors and Chaos Space Marines, it left two factions sort of empty. Because what made Chaos Space Marines different to regular Space Marines was they didn't get all the vehicles and equipment and war gear, but they made up for it by having demons. It was their ace up their sleeve, the trump card, the okay, we don't have as many power weapon wielding units or as many special weapons, but hey, here's a demon bomb I'm going to pull out my ass. That was great. Whereas, and they've lost that, and the same problem occurred in fantasy. And in fantasy, it didn't hurt them as much, but it just meant the armies looked a lot more vanilla afterwards. And conversely, the demons, well, instead of being able to run a lot of demons, but then with some, uh, some staying power provided by marines or chaos warriors, you very much become dependent on your demons performing in close combat. And if they don't win their combats, then they just cease to exist, essentially, because of instability and such. I think the range is good, but it, it's thin on the ground. You've got Demonettes, you've got uh, Seekers, you've got Hellstriders. You've got a couple of heroes as well in, in fantasy and such. The Fane of Slanish does nothing for me. Um, it's a tough one. I think what, what they really need, I think the Demons are doing pretty well. It's a shame there's no d Demon of Greed or Gluttony or anything like that. But when I look at like 40k, and currently the Noise Marine range is just some arms. Just some arms are available to upgrade some guys. Uh, obviously there's Lucius the Eternal, but he doesn't show up on a Noise Marine search. I think back to the old days, and I look at Horus Heresy for inspiration. So, immediately obviously the Cacophony. The Cacophony are gorgeous models. That's the Noise Marines on the top right. And of course, you've got the Phoenix Terminators, who I think could translate across nicely. In fact, I'd like to see two builds of Phoenix Terminators delivered for 40k. 
one that focuses on assault like these ones do here with the phoenix spears but also a set that focuses on being noise marine terminators so very dagger heavy but very poor in close combat relatively speaking and of course the palantine blaze which again i think would translate across really really well to 40k especially if they're hopped up on combat drugs these aren't corn berserkers these guys aren't about the number of attacks these guys are about the speed of their attacks and being able to do something like uh, an activation once per turn you can choose to activate this unit before someone else gets to activate theirs in close combat for instance because they're combat drugs that might be a cool little rule or something that they could be employed in order to make them stand out from the crowd of course on top of this i'd like to see the return of the sonic dreadnought and i mean a proper return of the sonic dreadnought not just some lame rules for a hell brute or something like that i mean it's a dreadnought or even a demon engine that is armed with noise sonic weaponry and it really rams home that point because i just think that would be really cool and it adds character to the army because it's something different that other people don't have a noise version of a mauler fiend something like that or a noise version of a uh, mauler fiend conversely uh perhaps a demon possessed vehicle of some kind like the soul grinder but a, a very slaneshi version perhaps it's embodying some of that uh that weird sensuousness of slaneshi it could be built either as something that's really beautiful or something really horrific it can go either way um also for characters and such i i love the idea of noise marine characters obviously we've got guitar playing guy but this is a blast master from uh, third edition chaos on the right and i think he's really cool with the little bits of fiery type trim that he has on him uh that really old school looking face i think actually works really cool and i like the idea of a slaneshi hq who's not a close combat monster like Lucius the Eternal running around with a sword and fencing with his opponents and full of pride I like the idea of a greedy and gluttonous uh Slaneshi hero something very similar to Grecius Glob the ogre uh, king who's a real big fat guy eating a chicken drumstick something like that like a hedonism bot for those who know Futurama uh something that that shows that Slaneshi is not just perverted weirdos in leather gimp suits running around whipping each other something that shows that slanesh is a master of all vices greed and gluttony are two of the biggest vices uh over say sexuality which is obviously something games workshop doesn't overly want to push because it's not very friendly for the kids you know hey kids we're gonna play slanesh look out for the green you know look out for the weird sexual stuff Ugh. yeah old school noise marines were so cool so I'd obviously like to see a return to that stuff. Noise Marines, yes. Uh, dreadnoughts that are Sonic, uh, or Demon Engines that are Sonic, yeah, totally. Um, being able to have Slaneshi Cultists might be also another great thing to see. Now, it could be something as simple as Slaneshi Beastmen, but I think that the, uh, the Zinch forces in Warhammer Fantasy really set the bar here. Because if you look at their um, Kiarath Alkalites, um, Give you one second, I'll pull it up on screen. Uh, Kiarik Acolytes and also their Zangors. Something like that, but for Sinesh, could be pretty cool. Now, you don't need to do something like Zangor Enlightened because there's already Seekers of Sinesh and such. You, you don't need to go down that path again. But definitely Sinesh Beastmen, that would be cool. Um, and Sinesh Cultists because they would be... Um, you would imagine them being some of the easiest cultists to drive into an absolute frenzy. Um, these are the followers of Pinhead from Hellraiser we're talking about. So these guys could be sadists. They could be uh, sadomasochistic. Who knows? But there's a lot of potential there with the Acolytes. You could have Acolytes which are completely outside of the box. You, I'm thinking something here along the lines of... Uh, if we go to Necromunda and we look at our gangs... Something along the lines of Dalek. The weird, creepy guys in trench coats like this. These would make really cool Slaneshi cultists. You don't know what's going on with them. Are they in their Hellraiser bondage gear underneath? You don't know. And again, the combat drugs, which is such a feature of the third edition era could be something that these guys have imagine them with big syringes on the back of their 
uh, clothing here. Uh, they could be running around with big pipes and in, going into their head or into their faces uh, and seeing other really disturbing stuff like we had on this chaos mutated sprue. There's a guy with his mouth sewn shut and his eyes bandaged over on the right there. Like, what if they did that with uh, these guys here? They're missing their eyes completely. Their eyes and mouths are sewn shut. Um, I think Event Horizon type thing, uh, Sam Neill in that. A lot of creepy stuff that can be done. Uh, Self-mutilation is definitely a thing. And it only has to be implied. The kids won't know what it means as opposed to when they look at a model and see it's got three boobies. Kids know what that means. They won't know what a guy with his mouth sewn shut and his eyes gouged out means. So that's what you could do with Slanish. And I think they've really just scratched the surface because every time they touch Slanish, they seem to go, okay, it needs to be a little bit sexualized and very slim and graceful like an elf. But it kind of misses the point, because you're going for just one aspect of a god which has so much flavor. Anyway, I like the releases, and I would consider making an army of this, and making my vision of Slanish. So if you want to see that, write in the comments below, and if enough people want me to do it, I guess I'll have to do it. Make with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.